In this week's episode, we take you on a behind the scenes tour of an action movie trailer shoot and we review the Lightcraft Workshop fader and D filters. Grab your 45 because DVTV starts right now. This episode is made possible in part by Rig Wheels, Camera Wheels for Creativity, Manhattan LCD, the affordable solution for high definition monitoring, CPM Camera Rigs, your lightweight solution for caging the beast, Special Camera Service, the HDSLR Professional. Hey guys, welcome to another brand new episode of DVTV, bringing you the next wave of digital video. I'm your host, Tony Reale, and today we're in beautiful Olathe, Kansas, and I'm joined with Isaac Alonji. Hey, Tony. Good friend of mine. Uh, now, Isaac, you were one of the first people that kind of introduced me to DSLR video when uh, way back, uh, back when 5D just came yeah. out, 5D Mark II, and uh, you've actually been doing it longer than I have, but I think you kind of got into it because you, you're primarily a photographer, fantastic photographer, and then uh, the 5D provided you a, a new opportunity for some low cost and, and really cinematic video productions. Yeah, I've been doing still photography for a long time. And um, when the 5D came out, it was the clear choice to shoot motion. Already familiar with trying to create stunning visual images and just adding the motion is such a fun um, added challenge to that. Absolutely. So today we're shooting a, a trailer for a film that we'll be working on for the next six months or so. And um, I'm really excited about some of the locations we have and uh, some of the actors and stuff. It should be a lot of fun. Very cool. Well, we're gonna follow you along this entire day, just showing us different techniques of how to shoot. And uh, so yeah, let's get started. Okay, sounds good. All right, you're gonna strut your stuff towards towards the door of the airplane. Are you ready? Action. Back to one, do it again. Now you got the F2.8 lens there. Are you gonna be shooting at uh, 2.8 or are you gonna be stopping down a little bit? No, I'm shooting at four. At 2.8, there isn't very much that's in focus. So I usually don't shoot all the way at 2.8. But I am shooting at 30 frames, so we can slow it down a little bit. Ready? And... Action. Good. A wise man once said, if you want to make prettier pictures, stand in front of prettier stuff. So I always look for locations that add production value. Um, and props like jets and things like that. Um, we're gonna we're gonna shoot with the 60D so we can shoot at 60 frames a second. Um, and slow down the driving shots um, in case we need to, if they're bouncy or just to look more cinematic. Okay, I'm trying to get a shot of her turning around and looking behind her um, with kind of some of the trees going by the windshield in the background of the shot. Um, so it matches the uh, shot we got from the front of the car. When I look behind me, you want me to actually turn my head and look in between the seats? A little bit. You can kind of glance in the mirror some. Tony. Yeah, crank it all the way up and point it at her. There you go. Okay, so there's some light on her. That's kind of profile. Point it more towards the front of the car, Tony. A little bright on her. 
There you go. Yeah, that's nice. Okay, I think well, one shot, just kind of a close push in, but then maybe something shooting through the door for some depth. Um, let's do the close shot first, and then we'll do the other one. Um, I'm looking for mostly the window light for the softness, and then just a little bit of a harsher edge from the light panel. And then we'll use a little reflector for a little fill. Um, See how that looks. Maybe work it from there. We're gonna go with a 50 millimeter because of the light in the room. Not very bright. We won't shoot at 1.2, but might get close. Woohoo! Can you pretend like you're sleeping? Okay, so let's kill the overhead lights. I'm gonna have you on the other side of him, Elizabeth, with him like laying down here with his head towards me. And then you kind of, kind of, kind of snuggle in real close. Come here and snuggle with me. Snuggle with mommy. Okay, can you turn towards me, Jeffrey? Turn that on a little bit, Steve. Okay, now dial it down. Kill that, kill that light for a sec. Let's see if it do. Man, it's almost prettier without it, isn't it? So for natural light, we're shooting at 1.2. It uh, was 640 on the ISO. And uh, so we're pretty much wide open. I even have the shutter down to 30th of a second to let in a little extra light. Um, I'm thinking for some kind of like dramatically lit silhouette. Um, we could have them profile facing each other doing doing something. Did I just pick my ear on camera? <laughs> yeah, let's do something at this table. Just like at one end of it, but leave all the stuff on it. So let's, uh, let's shoot from back there, shooting this way, and then we'll do some like cutaways. So again, going to the long lens. My theory is shoot um, really wide and really long. Everything in between is for YouTube. So for more drama, we're gonna dolly out from behind this thing. to tilt into the shot. Gives me a good point to cut. And then punch in tight. Get a nice cut away. Okay, scoot this whole truck away from me. Table and you and everything. There we go, perfect. Um, I have to switch, because I just realized I was shooting on the wrong side of the line. Um, if all the shots are taken from this side of the two of them, I have to stay on this side, otherwise the viewer will get really confused when I move. 
But I'm gonna have to cheat Jeffrey around a little bit because of my background. Elizabeth, scoot around this way just a little bit. There you go, just like that. So in the background of my shot, I have the uh, white door frame, kind of framing some light in behind her that provides kind of a bright spot of depth in the background a little bit. Um, I like to always put the, the really large soft light source on the opposite side from the people. So I'm shooting on the right side of their faces and the light source is coming from the left. A lot of people will put the light source on the same side that they on the same side they shoot from, but I think this creates a lot of depth. Right now we're looking for a shot of uh, the mom and the child playing. Um, something kind of fun, real bright, something sunlit looking, um, summerish, but it's like one o'clock, and so we don't have that pretty evening sun. Um, so we're gonna try and make it look that way as best we can. So I normally find a spot in the shade where there's, where there's some light coming through the back of the leaves, um, kind of like what we found here. If we shot anywhere else in this yard, it wouldn't look pretty at all. Um, so I always want more light from the side than from the top. So we have a couple just pop out reflectors, and we're gonna hold one reflector over their head, hold that over my head. We're gonna hold one reflector over their heads as best we can, and then do the white side on that, Steve. And then we're gonna, whenever I bounce sunlight, I always use the white side of the reflector um, if I'm bouncing it into somebody's face. And um, if I'm doing a backlight, I'll use the silver side of the reflector. But uh, we'll get a stiffer one for the overhead because we wanna block, block that overhead light um, so that there's a nice soft, side light coming in and maybe a little backlight from the sun and the trees. Let's get started. That's so cute. Okay, we got like 50 million awesome shots, and we need like two. Nice job, guys. Isaac, you're using the Canon 70 to 200 f2.8. I've uh, I actually have the 70 to 200 f4 because I don't really shoot any faster than f4. But I know there's some advantages to the 2.8 lens. So why don't you tell us a little about that? Um, the reason I'm using the 70 to 200 2.8 is because it's a stabilized version. Um, I found with longer lenses that aren't stabilized, I get a lot of rolling shutter. Um, I, I love the handheld look, but um, I've just had problems with that. So the stabilized lens pretty much takes care of any rolling shutter problems. Um, I normally shoot at f4, but I have the 2.8 there if I'm shooting in low light situations. Mm -hmm. I have that extra stop. I'd rather have a stop than grain, so um, it, it works out great. Here I am going to shoot at 2.8 just because I want the uh, super shallow depth of field. This episode is made possible in part by Small HD, the world's smallest high definition monitors. Blackbird camera stabilizer, designed to be easy to use with great performance. Cinemover the versatile motion system for small cameras. Hey John, what do we got today to look at? Uh, we have uh, some products from Lightcraft Workshop. Um, actually, these are the Fader NDs. Uh, one here for actually the uh, DSLR shooter and um, actually is a sliding adjust and we'll explain that in just a little bit. And actually I'll let you explain uh, this setup because I know you're kind of excited about it. Yeah, these, I was really thrilled when I heard that they finally announced these because this is a 77 mil, but they have like every different size for every different lens type. Um, but these are four by four filters. So these cover almost every single lens type out there. And so these are essentially two pieces of glass. These are actually glass um, and they rotate to separately to create that, that 4x4 or that fader ND look. And so the fact that we have two 4x4 uh, filters now available, that means you can pretty much cover every, you can just buy these 
and be done with it. Now you could get like step down rings and stuff like that, and that's kind of annoying. But if you have a matte box and you have the, the one with the separate rotating trays, um, this is a great option. It's a little bit more <laughs> pricey, but definitely a great option. Yeah. And I don't know how familiar you are with like the fader ND of people at home, but um, what's great is uh, typically you have your ND filter and you want to uh, knock down a step or two and you're trying to, uh, typically I use a lot shooting outdoors, wanting to maintain my, my uh, aperture and everything set a specific way, um, but I want to knock down a little bit of light. And what's great about these is instead of trying to adjust and throw multiple faders on or carrying around a bunch of different faders, you have one. And um, you know, you have the 77 mil here, and uh, 77 mil is great because it's kind of a standardized uh, L-series Canon setup. But what's great is that as you turn it, you actually start knocking down the light or letting in more light. And so it, uh, it facilitates something uh, that's pretty awesome with just having to carry around just the one, so. Right, because otherwise you end up with like multiple filters stacked on top of each other right. that can cut down in your the quality of your light and stuff like that um, and and yeah so you can get color shifting with that and stuff like that so I really like these These are very cost-effective um, I've heard some people say that they have issues with them over 200 mil I don't own a lens over 200 mil so I've never had that issue but um, that's just I guess something to be aware of but these are these are great options again if you have a matte box you want to just go one and done you get the this kit these set together and they work together yep. and if you're just looking DSLR uh, this is just a a great option um, and actually over the long haul save you some money versus carrying around one or two or three ND filters and so uh, we actually use both of these a great deal when we shoot so and the last thing I'll mention too is if you I mean if you've got the skill and you can get your hand up there you can do an iris pull now traditionally with cam cameras like the 5d or whatever like that you can't necessarily iris down you need to get like le the um, uh, lenses that actually have uh, no stops, uh, no click stops in them, so you can do a manual iris pull. Those can be a bit expensive, stuff like that. If you can fit your, your fingers in there, I've actually done a manual iris pull, essentially, to when I was transitioning from like a window to uh, to a you know indoors or something like that. So I mean, essentially a very cheap iris pull. That's that's awesome to have with you. So yeah. check them out, lightcraftworkshop.com. All right, thanks. Right, Isaac, you got a van full of gear to do all for forms of motion, jibs, uh, slider, dolly, pretty much anything that you might need. Um, but a lot of people are criticizing motion as like it's overused and stuff like that. Uh, what do you find to be the proper motivation for different types of movement? Um, I think as long as the shot is motivated for motion, it's, it's fine. Um, you know, if it's, it, if it's supposed to be kind of a confusing or chaotic feel, I do a lot of a lot of horizontal movement. Um, if, if it's more emotional, we'll, we'll come in on them. If it's more dramatic, um, or like to make a point. But I don't think you want to just move for no reason. Yep. Um, a jib rising up, you know, feels real final or uh, epic. Mm -hmm. um, but just to move to move, then it does look pretty silly. Yep. And action. Look around a little bit like you're kind of nervous. Good.
it a real I'm gonna house? die. No, it's a fake. I'm guy. so excited. <laughs> okay. Wait, who are we killing? John? Yeah. Okay, so John, you're on the couch. And so you're gonna stand here. Just be like. Boom. Do I make the sound and everything? I mean, is. Oh, man, this is heavy. Is this real? No, it's fake. Alright, spin around. <laughs> is, is there a clip in it? At no. least. <laughs> Trust me, it's fake. There. Th those are those are totally not real bullets. Okay. <laughs> I promise. Because <laughs> he's like, no, 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 no. I'm like, that's pretty heavy for. Wait a minute. So, do I squeeze the trigger? No, I don't actually. No, you just like go like this. You just go, boom, and he's like, boom. All right. Do, what? There you go. Right there. You Perfect. Really gangster those sideways. Oh, then I would have to sag my pants. <laughs> something on my head, something black. Or sag my pants. Uh, we're using a flash with a remote trigger, a, uh, a radio popper to create the, the gun muzzle flash, and um, not the gun muzzle flash, the, uh, the flash, yeah. We'll put, a, we'll put a, a flash in later, right, from the muzzle? Alright guys, well thanks for joining us on this shoot and thank you Isaac for, for letting us tag along with you. It's yeah. been a lot of fun. I know every time I hang out with you I'm always learning something new. It's really encouraging to see just your style of shooting isn't like necessarily that everything has to be planned out right away. That you kind of get that shot ideas in your head and then just let things flow naturally. Yeah. Any advice you got for our, for our viewers? Um, you know, I think locations are so important. Like finding great places to shoot. Um, Finding the right looking people that you want. Um, you know, keep the lighting simple. I, I rarely use more than two or three lights um, for most setups. Uh, intensity and placement's a lot more important. Um, and, and softness or hardness or whatever you want it to be. But um, I also think just composing, taking the time to compose nice shots, shooting through something um, to give it depth. Um, you know, just using wide lenses, using telephoto lenses, uh, keep it interesting, keep the camera moving. Um, you know, don't rush through it. Yeah. We spent all day to shoot 10 or so seconds worth of footage. <laughs> so, yeah. um, you know, it's fun. Cool. Well, again, thanks for your time. Uh, I know that you're going to be editing this video down, and we're going to go ahead and show that right now so you guys can enjoy that. But definitely check out Isaac's website, IsaacAlonji.com. We'll go ahead and put the link down in the info section as well. But check it out. Check out some of his other work. He is a skilled commercial photographer, videographer. Um, just been uh, phenomenal in your art form. And it's just Thanks. really exciting to, to see you as you progress through and just absorbing all these different types of technologies. So again, thanks, thanks so for much. your time, man. All right. Want more Next Wave DV in your life? Make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube to be notified when the next episode airs. 
Visit our website for daily posts on the latest digital video news. Like us on Facebook to join the Next Wave DV community. And follow us on Twitter for behind-the-scenes news and pictures.